2023 is just around the corner. And as DIYers that love tools, I think it's time that we talk about whether it's time to consider going all battery powered or if we should hang on to the cord a little bit longer. So let's go. Now, if I were taking a guess, most likely you probably own some battery powered tools. Maybe not necessarily a lot, but I'd be willing to bet that your drill and impact are cordless. Mainly because that tends to be a good place to start when you're starting to venture into the cordless tool world. They're typically a pretty reasonable price and a lot of times you can just buy those two together in a little kit it's easy to come by but as you probably noticed there are more battery powered tools now than ever before routers sanders miter saws table saws your lawn equipment now heck you can buy a zero turn riding mower that is battery powered now a lot of this is because battery powered technology has made a lot of strides in terms of reliability and affordability and because of that there's never been a better time to consider getting started on a battery powered platform so if you're given some consideration to cutting the cord and going all battery powered i'm going to help you make the decision a little bit today with what i'm going to call the five p's First and foremost, you have to consider what you can afford. Now, I would never advise that anybody go into debt to try to upgrade their tools like this. I just don't think that that's wise. You may disagree and that's okay. But one thing that we have to remember is that everybody has different income levels and we're all at different stages of life. So for somebody to go and buy a drill driver combo that maybe costs $400, that might seem ludicrous to somebody who to somebody else would just go, man, that's such a small part of my income. I don't even think about it. And while the old adage of you get what you pay for seems to kind of be baked into our culture, more and more what we're seeing is that's not necessarily the case when it comes to a lot of these tools. You've got brands like Ryobi and Craftsman that uh, are a little bit more of a budget friendly brand that are making great tools these days. So I definitely would not rule those out. Now the brand platform that you choose is super important and here's why. So I had an opportunity to get this 20 volt brushless kit from a friend of mine several years back for a great, great deal. And um, I jumped on it because honestly, these retail for about $399. Uh, this is the big boy, it's the hammer drill, it's 60 volt flex volt, all that stuff, very powerful. And so I had an opportunity to get them for about half the retail price and so I jumped on it. It seemed like a no brainer. But what I didn't think about at the time was that a lot of the DeWalt brushless stuff is kind of expensive and I'm a little bit cheap sometimes. So uh, I, consequently, I really haven't bought much else in the way of this 20 volt stuff. I want to, uh, I just can't hardly bring myself to spend the money a lot of times. And so that's something that I just didn't think about that probably you ought to think about as well. Now with that in mind, uh, I do have also the Milwaukee 12 volt kit. And honestly, I love this kit. Um, and I've actually bought more other accessories from Milwaukee than I have uh, from the DeWalt stuff, just because that 12 volt stuff is a little cheaper, a little bit easier to swallow. And most of the time it kind of does what I need it to do. So be sure that you consider the brand whenever you're starting to think about some of this stuff, because that will impact some things in the future. Now, one thing to remember when we are talking about battery power tools is that to a certain degree, we're kind of trading power for portability. Now, before you guys come at me in the comments, let me explain what I'm saying here. I've got this big 20 volt drill that we just talked about, right? And I love this thing. I've also got this 18 volt Milwaukee that I use at my day job. I love this thing. Both of these are basically top in their class, but sometimes I need a little bit more. And so I end up having to revert to my corded hammer drill if I need to push something just a little bit farther over the edge. Now, with that in mind, I would never in a million years switch and just go straight corded because that cordless stuff, it does what I need to do 99% of the time. Now, there are numerous videos on YouTube that go into a little bit more detail when it comes to the power side of things that really will specifically talk about, hey, like if you're looking at going to a corded versus a cordless Sawzall, for example, they will kind of do a lot more scientific kind of breakdown and really kind of examine that. And so I would highly recommend that when you're kind of thinking about that from a power standpoint, that you do some research on YouTube to try to figure out exactly if it's going to fit the needs that you're needing it to do. Sometimes the inverse of what we just talked about is also true. So uh, I've got this leaf blower and weed eater from Ego and they are fantastic. Um, I used to have a leaf blower that was electric. Uh, it was just okay, um, but honestly, this is way more powerful. Uh, and then also, I used to have a cheap weed eater, and it was the same kind of thing. It was just a cheap gas weed eater. 
that weed eater there is way more powerful. Um, now, it doesn't have the battery life that I would prefer just because I've got a big yard. And so uh, it kind of pushes it to do it on one battery a lot of times, uh, but it is still really, really good. Remember that 20 volt DeWalt set that I've got? Well, DeWalt actually makes an 18 gauge finish nailer in that same setup. And man, the price on that thing with a battery is like 350 bucks. I personally can't hardly bring myself to spend that. It just doesn't seem practical because I've got this boss stitch nailer and heck you can pick this thing up for 99 bucks every day. I've got this cobalt air compressor here, runs about 209 typically. That's cheaper than just buying the nailer and I can use this air compressor for a lot of other things. And heck, I feel so strongly about it that I've given some consideration to go into Ryobi's nailer just because the price is a little bit more palatable for me. But I hate the idea of having a third battery platform around here for tools. Another thing that I don't think is super practical when it comes to cordless tools is something like a sander because like for me, I'm in this shop all the time. I've got it connected up to dust collection and honestly, another cord connected up and taped down to this dust collector. Not that big a deal. Now, if you're a contractor on the go, some of the things that we've talked about here today don't really apply. I work as a field technician for my day job, and I know the difference in the importance of extremely reliable and rugged tools from a professional standpoint. That's honestly why my work truck is outfitted with the best that Milwaukee has to offer. I want something that I know can get banged around in the truck toolbox and will still keep going day after day. I want lots of convenience and power while also being reliable, and my company is okay with paying for that. Because at the end of the day, they don't want to string extension cords everywhere all the time when time is money. But when I'm home, I'm a DIYer with plenty of AC power and a limited budget. Will I ever toss all of my electric tools and go all battery powered? Maybe, but I kind of doubt it. I'm a little bit of a sucker for nostalgia and things that have just kind of held up on me. This here skill saw has been fantastic. I got this, this is one of the first tools that I bought about 13 years ago when I started dabbling all this stuff and it's never let me down. There are better skill saws out there. There are battery powered ones. I just keep using this one because it works and it's just kind of a good reminder of kind of where I came from. Now, if you want to see some of these tools in action, we do lots of projects on this channel. This video right here is our latest laundry room project that we just did, remodeled it. And then also over here, I've got a video queued up for you. It talks a lot about the tools and stuff that we feel like that every homeowner should have. Mm -hmm.